watching Back of the Room with Matthew Gill for Punchline Magazine here in beautiful Glendale, California with the one, the only, Mike DiStefano. Mike, thank you so much for hey. being here, coming on out. Well, I'm not, you came here. I didn't go anywhere. Well, he Don't did. act like I went somewhere <laughs> for your stupid show. Like, yeah. oh, Mike, thanks for coming all the way out here. I yeah. fucking left my hotel room. Yeah, we got him 50 yards away. Yeah, yeah. I was in my hotel room five feet away. We I came to, out. This is how we lured him out. Too. Yeah, they gave me a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> he was out of cigarettes. Yeah. One of the things that was really interesting is um, I read in your bio that you had started stand-up at 31. Yeah, 31 or 32, I don't remember. Yeah, about 31, I think. Starting later at 31, 32, did, did it give you a different perspective? Did you feel like you were kind of behind, like emotionally? Like, oh, no. No? Not at all, yeah, complete opposite, you know? It's interesting you bringing that up because because of the last Comic Standing exposure, I've had a lot of guys in their 40s that are doing comedy come up to me and like, oh, dude, you know, it's been so much to me that you're on this show. Like, yeah. You know, and I, look, I'm not old. Like, fuck, youth sucks. <laughs> youth is the worst time of your life because you don't realize what you got. Like, you don't, you have no concept of the time that's in front of you and how to use it properly. You're stupid. You're dumb. No, I'm so glad. I started comedy. I didn't have to find a voice like you little pussies out there. Oh, I got to <laughs> find my voice. I got to figure out what I, what makes me tick and... Hey. You know, you spend five years trying to be a fucking gimmicky act, or you spend five years trying to, cur you know, curb the the language, whatever. I started comedy. I got to laugh my first joke. I swear to you. And not that. Then I got bombed for ten minutes after that. But my yeah. first joke, and I remember that because yeah. I because people knew I knew who I was the minute I had stayed. It was no right. process. Yeah. I didn't yeah. spend ten years drinking and trying to get pussy. Yeah. Like half of these little dicks out there <laughs> wasting your fucking time. Yeah. Can you curse on the show? Yeah. yeah you can well, do whatever you so. want. Yeah. <laughs> How do you develop material then? I mean, do you, do you sit down and write? Do you no. not? Do you, do you, you just put topics down and take it to stage? Or? Yeah, you know, I'll tell you what I do, and uh, it's a process that, the thing with comedy, it, it challenges you on so many levels because you don't know if you're doing it right. Like, I always think I'm doing it wrong. I never go up on stage knowing if something's gonna be funny. Hmm. I have no clue. I take something that I find interesting, and it's usually something that's painful, hmm. that people find revolting, that has hurt me personally or I see hurting other people and I'll go up and just bring it up mm. and I, I it's such a thrill to try to find the funny in it yeah hey so we had to move locations there was a, a group of unruly teenage girls who saw Mike and uh, harassed us a little bit that's that's the the problem with being on a national television show how does yeah. that kind of change things situations like that where you're it just gets annoying you know I'm like Take your mouth off my penis. You know, this is disgusting. <laughs> Doing this last comic standing, that, I don't do shows like that. Guys yeah. like me don't even attempt that. Yeah. I literally signed the contract 10 seconds before I went in to do my audition. I'm not kidding really? you. I was so, I'm not doing this. Yeah. But I said, I'm going to give it a shot. Let me yeah. just say, and I went in and I did it. And now, obviously, it's working out. But all through this process, I've been just having these experiences of, wow, this is amazing. This is a whole new world. I can actually do prime time comedy. That's a challenge. Let me yeah. give that a shot. Yeah. And it's been just amazing. It's yeah. been a lot of fun. So. Yeah. so is it is it hard holding you down? I mean, does censorship bother you as far as this NBC? Um, during the NBC process, uh, I got maybe a couple of times I got annoyed at what they wouldn't approve, but. It's not NBC's fault or, or the censor's fault or this fault. It's the American public suing. It's these litigious, is that what the right word? Yeah. Litigious people that sue all the time. Yeah. It's all you people out there that want to sue because your feelings got hurt. You fucking weak, pathetic fuck. I'm going to write a letter. It's all white people too, by the way. Any black people, probably black people don't even watch this fucking stupid show, but <laughs> white people, stop writing letters to, to networks threatening to sue them because you got your sensibilities were fucking affected. Fuck you, man. Grow up. I'd like to take everyone in America that, that's offended by words and give them something to be offended by. The problem is they have no frame of reference for real suffering, so they, they suffer. Ooh, I was offended. I'll, if 
let me duct, I'll fucking duct tape them to a radiator in a basement in the South Bronx and beat their face with a monkey wrench repeatedly and say, now you have something to fucking write a letter about. <laughs> yeah. Here's some real pain and suffering for you. It's really pathetic. And it's America's fault. It's pussy American fault. Whoever in, a, in this country ever wrote a letter or ever said, I was offended by that man's thoughts and ideas, you're the problem. And you have, they're not, freedom of speech is only important to people who have something to say. Most of you really have nothing to fucking say. That's why you don't care about freedom of speech. Because you have nothing inside of you worth fucking talking about. But that the rest of us want to say things. And, and I don't mean just curse words and all that. That's kind of garbage. Real meaningful stuff, you know? Yeah. That's going to help people. Yeah. And, and make people go, wow, life is okay. We don't have to live in this tight fucking world of shit. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're Fuck you. They're finally coming for you, bro. <laughs> You, you're on, you're on, they got your social security now on the, yeah. uh, they're going to neutralize you. Yeah, fuck them too. <laughs> the government's coming to neutralize Mike, because yeah. he's an agitator. Yeah, no, I'm not, it's not that. <laughs> he's going to agitate the yeah. public. But you know, without the, without the envelope, without the line, then, so the, I guess it's good. You know what? I'm glad all you pussies are out there because you make me look courageous. <laughs> Who are you people now? If you're performing at a show, you can pick the venue and pick the crowd. Who's Mike D. Stuff? Who do you love performing in front of? Who, who would um, be like if you could wave a wand? Well, I love just anybody who who's been through hell in their life and has you know and and has overcome or is still overcoming it. I love people who are aware how fucked up life is, right. but yet there's still some level of happiness about it all and wanting to continue. People who are trying to avoid everything. See, co people come out to comedy clubs for a lot of different reasons, but the crowds that come out to be distracted from their misery, I, I, I'm really not interested in them. Because yeah. they don't want to hear about their misery. Yeah. They want to hear uh, they want to hear the same shit that they're trying to get away from. Right. Talk about cell phones and how they're not, they, you know, how they don't work right. When, and when you go in the subway and you're, uh, uh, talk about that. Like, no, that's not interesting, you dumb bitch. And that's why you came here, to be distracted from that banal fucking bullshit existence that you're living. Yeah. Yeah, I start from suffering and darkness because that's what needs to be made light of. Right, right. Funny shit, you know, when a comic starts off a joke by saying, isn't this funny? You already lost me because if it's already funny, what the fuck do I need you for? <laughs> I can see it myself. So if uh, you know people dig you, where, where, where can they find you online? And they uh, can find me on my website, mikedestefano.com, and uh, you know just Google me. I'm big time right now. <laughs> fuck, how could you find? Turn on me? your TV. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't want to tell them how to find me. Easy. If, if I'm worth yeah. it, you'll find yeah. me. Fuck you. It's like in Goodfellas when the geek looks down the street, tells the girl, "Go in a store." Yeah, exactly. go to store. Yeah, <laughs> She's yeah. like, "I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you want to go looking for Mike DiStefano." <laughs> yeah. Let me tell. And I, let me say to all the new comics out there, I had no management, no agents, no nothing, and that's and I got here. Now I just got with my managers recently, um, and and that's going to be great to take me to a different level, go places that I couldn't go on my own. But I want the newer comics to know that you get, you're the product, man. You that's all that matters is you developing a great act. The agents will come, the managers will come, but not right now. Take your time. You know they come up to me. I've been doing comedy six months. I want to get an agent. Why don't you go smash your face against that wall over there? I want to watch you bang your head. Don't do comedy classes. Stan Hope covered that. Make sure you read that. Comedy classes are fucking scams. Bringer shows, they call them. We have to bring 40 of your friends. You Don't do it. You're going to hurt your f family's feelings because you are awful. You know, if some of these kids come up there they, and their families say, hey, yay, I would just... Next time you bring me somewhere, make sure it's your fucking suicide. That's the next thing I want to watch you do. Is I want to watch you stab yourself in the fucking throat. Um, but don't do bringer shows. You know, if someone says you want to do a bringer show, 
tell him yes, but bring a golf club and bust it over their fucking head for trying to manipulate you. You know, all that stuff's garbage, man. You know, stage time is all that matters, and you know, that's it. There's no quick shortcuts, man. It takes time. So your last and final performance of your life, your best performance of your life, what five comics, I know you've covered a few of them, uh, what five comics would you like in the back room to see the best you've ever done? I'd like it to be all new comics because they don't know any better and they will just think I'm great. But uh, no, if I could have my way, let's see, right now it would be Dave Attell, Bill Burr, Doug Stanhope, um, Mark Marin. Although I, he's a dick, but he's amazing, you know? Like, yeah, you know, I, I'm such a love hate. I, you know, Mark, I don't know him that well, but he's like, yeah, he's like this fucking angst-ridden cocksucker. But he's amazing, too. Like, I, he's got a brain, like, you know, amazing brain. And I would love for him to say, hey, Mike, I like, that was amazing, you know? A guy like him, that would mean a lot to me. Um, and, uh, you know, Greg Giraldo, you know, he's a friend and he's just somebody that, you know, when he laughs at my shit, I'm like, it, it blows me away because he, you know, I respect him so much. And uh, although I'm getting to be friendly with him now, we're close friends, and I'm almost, you know, I'm better than him now. Fuck, <laughs> yeah. fuck you, Geraldo. All right, I'm better looking than you. I mean, yeah, I'm a little fat. Yeah, I'm not kidding. definitely. So, yeah, did I say uh, Bill uh, Jim Norton? Uh, no. Yeah, him too. That's six. Fuck okay. you. I bring as yeah, many people as I want. Your show. Tell me five people. Don't fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew Gill for Back of the Room for Punchline Magazine. Mike DiStefano for the Boogie Down Bronx. Please watch him on Last Comic Standing if it's still on, if it's still going. Uh, vote for him if it's still on air. Uh, if not, please see him live in a town near you. Mike, thank you so much for your honesty. My pleasure, bro. Appreciate thank it, you. man.